Hello friends, welcome back to channel Neat Biology Expert. I am Dr. Parveen. In this lecture series, we are studying class 12 biology chapter 2 genetics. In this particular lesson, we are going to study in detail about pleiotrophic genes. What is pleiotrophic genes? What is the definition for pleiotrophic genes? A single gene, a single gene which controls more than one unrelated character simultaneously is called as pleiotrophic gene. Right. So, we know that in Mendelian genetics, one character of an organism is controlled by one gene. This is the normal classic Mendelian genetics. Right. So, whereas this pleiotrophic gene is an example for non-Mendelian genetics, that is it is a deviation from Mendelism, where one gene controls different characters in an organism, different unrelated characters that do simultaneously at the same time. So, such gene is called as pleiotrophic gene. So, the gene could able to show the multiple phenotypic expression. So, the different different characters controlled by the genes could be expressed phenotypically. Okay. So, it could able to show phenotypic expression. So, this phenomenon is called as pleiotrophy or pleiotrophism. Pleiotrophy, pleiotrophism. These two are interrelated words. Okay. Same meaning. This phenomenon is called as pleiotrophy or pleiotrophism and the genes which could able to execute this phenomenon, they are called as pleiotrophic genes. Okay. So, this word pleiotrophy, this has been originally originated from a Greek word where pleon, pleon means more, trophos, trophos means ways. So, one gene could able to control different characters in different ways. So, that is why we call this gene as pleiotrophic genes. So, in order to explain you in a simpler way, what is a pleiotrophic gene? This we can easily say as a multitasking, multitasking gene, right? So, we could able to do multitasking, right? So, while you were watching TV, you could able to eat. At the same time, you will um, scroll your mobile screen and uh, you can hear a music like this. You chat with your friend like this. At one time, you could able to do multitasking. So, similarly, one gene at one time, if you would able to control different characters in an organism, such gene is called as pleiotrophic gene. So, look at this picture. This is a chromatid, right? The chromosome chromatid. So, in this chromatid, we have this region, this red region, which codes for, denotes a single gene. So, if this single gene controls different characters in an organism, say, we, we say this as trite also, different characters in an organism, Character A, character B, character C, that is multiple characters. So, such gene is called as pleiotrophic gene. Right. So, the word pleiotrophic gene was originally coined in 1910 by a German genetist Ludwig Plaid. So, this man coined the term pleiotrophic gene. So, originally this pleiotrophic this uh, phenomenon was observed by Krieger Johann Mendel when he was doing his pea plant experiment. But at that time, he could not able to recognize this. He could not able to explain this. Okay. So, the later when scientists, they discovered this pleiotrophy, this pleiotrophism mechanism, they found that the same thing was also noted by Mendel and he also recorded the same. Okay. For example, See, Mendel, when he was doing experiments using the garden pea plant, Pisum sativum, a single gene controlled three different characters in that organism. Seed coat color, flower color and also dark spot on the axils of the leaves. Okay, see how. When Mendel did his hybridization experiments, he took a plant and he crossed this plant with hybridized with another plant A and B. Okay. So, his plant A, his pea plant A had purple flower, red spot on leaf axis. So, what is leaf axis? For example, if this is the leaf, okay, this region is called as leaf axis, okay. So, Mendel found that the plants he took for experiment A, it, the leaf axis contained like this red color spot or dark spots. This character was there and the plant, the seed coat was brown in color, okay. So, Plant A was purple flowered, red spot on the leaf axis and brown seed coat contained plant. So, this plant he hybridized or he crossed this with another plant which has white flower, no red spot on the uh, leaf axis and white seed coat plant. Right. So, when he did this crossing, Mendel found that all these three characters 
simultaneously inherited from the parent to the offspring so if the offspring contains purple flower means the purple flower flowered plant also had brown seed and red spot on the leaf axis if the offspring were white flower means the plant also had white seed coat and no red spot okay so mendel recorded that these three character simultaneously inherited but he didn't know that this is due to pleiotropism okay so pleiotropism was originally recorded by mendel and later the scientists discovered this phenomenon and explained right so here see here for example suppose this is the gene which codes for the flower color red spot on the axil leaf axis and also the white seed coat so these three characters were simultaneously inherited to the next generation that is due to pleiotropism okay right so now let us understand the differences between pleiotropic gene and polygenic gene so these two are different concepts okay but both are examples for deviations from mendelism right see normally mendelian genetics what normal mendelian genetics is one gene controls one character in an organism say for example here look at this picture gene a controls the plant height okay then gene b controls the pod size gene c controls another uh, root root thickness like this one gene controls one character in an organism this is a normal thing which we know okay normal biological effect whereas what is pleiotropic gene this is pleiotropic gene so in pleiotropy one gene controls different characters in an organism simultaneously okay so this one gene controls different characters in an organism at the same time so this gene is called as pleiotropic gene right understood and then what is polygenic gene this is completely different if one character in an organism this is one character okay so if one character in an organism is controlled by different genes this is called as polygenic gene okay so here one character is controlled by different genes whereas in pleiotropic gene one gene controls different characters you understand now the difference so these are the differences between polygenic gene and pleiotropic gene so now we are talking about pleiotropic gene right so this pleiotropic genes are present in all the organisms so previously i told you about um, plants okay mendel took the pea plant he found that the characters are uh, inherited simultaneously because of pleiotropic gene similarly pleiotropic genes are also found in drosophila plants animals like this okay right here we have to understand another thing called additive pleiotropic effect what is additive pleiotropic effect so see here generally if a single gene controls a different character in an organism we call this as pleiotropic right here not all the time all the characters of an organism are equally controlled this is very very important okay so we know that one gene controls different character in an organism but it is not essential that all the characters are controlled equally sometimes some character will be controlled less some character will be controlled more like this okay it varies so this is called as additive pleiotropic effect so for better understanding look at this picture look at this picture here we have three genes g1 is gene 1 g2 is gene 2 g3 is g3 three genes are there okay and there are three phenotypic characters here p1 p2 p3 suppose here g1 controls the character 1 and also character 2 that means one gene is controlling two character so we call this as pleiotropic gene understood similarly g2 controls p2 character character 2 also character 3 this is also a pleiotropic gene then g3 g3 controls second character and also third character so g3 is also a pleiotropic gene but but look carefully suppose this second character this second character p2 is controlled by g1 also g2 also and g3 also when these three genes contribute they contribute equally so that the second character is 
expressed phenotypically. That means in another way what we could say G1, the first gene shows a less influence over the second character. G2 also shows some influence. G3 also shows some influence. So as a result, totally this phenotypic character is expressed. Understood? Right? So this is called as additive phenotypic effect. So not all the characters are completely or equally controlled. Sometimes it may be expressed less or sometimes it may be expressed more. Okay? So this is called as additive phenotypic effect. Now, let us, let us see the important examples for pleiotrophy in human beings. So, we have two important examples, sickle cell anemia and phenylketonuria. So, let us see first sickle cell anemia. What is sickle cell anemia? In short, we say this as SCA, sickle cell anemia. Okay. So, this is an autosomal recessive disorder. Autosomal recessive disorder. What is autosomal? That means we have... 23 pairs of chromosomes, right? So, 22 pairs of chromosomes are called as what? Autosomes. Autosomes. Autosomes means the chromosomes which are responsible for body characters. Okay? The 23rd pair is called as allosome. Allosome means this is the sex chromosome which determines the sex of the human being, whether male or a female. Okay? So, this is autosome. That means the chromosomes responsible for the body character. How our appearances will be like this. Okay. So, this sickle cell anemia is a genetic mutation which occurs in the autosomes. Okay. That's why it's called as autosomal disorder. Then what is recessive? Recessive disorder means if two genes, we know that we have always uh, two chromosomes, one from the father, one from the mother. Right. So, the pair. So, if both the defective genes are present on the chromosome, then only the character or the disorder will be expressed. The patient will have the disease. Otherwise, if only one is a defective G and then is a normal G, the disease will not be expressed or the character will not be expressed. So, this is called as recessive disorder. Okay. I will explain you a little later. See, sickle cell anemia cause the deformed RBC with a rigid crescent shape. So, what happens in sickle cell anemia? Normally, in a healthy human being, what is the shape of RBC? This is biconcave disc in shape, like this shape, normal RBC shape. Whereas, in a sickle cell anemia patient, the size of the RBC is like a crescent, crescent, half moon shape. Okay. So, why this happens? Why this happens? Okay. See, what happens in the RBCs, when the RBC is in a, is a, in a normal discoidal shape, we know that the RBC on the surface of the RBC, there are hemoglobin molecules, right? What is the function of the hemoglobin? They carry oxygen and give to the other organs wherever they go, right? So, hemoglobin is the oxygen transporter. So, here this is the structure, molecular structure of hemoglobin. So, when we see the molecular structure of the hemoglobin, the hemoglobin is made up of four polypeptide chains, right? So, these are the polypeptides, polypeptide chains. How many polypeptides? Four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And there are two beta chains and two alpha chains. See here, this green color, these are the alpha chains which we say as alpha 1, alpha 2 chains. And these two yellow color are the beta chain which we say as beta 1, beta 2 chains. So, hemoglobin is made up of four chains, polypeptide chains, alpha 2 alpha and 2 beta, right. Now, this hemoglobin is a iron containing protein which carries oxygen. So, this is a protein. So, usually we know that proteins are encoded by genes, right. So, genes are responsible to produce this hemoglobin. So, which gene? There is a gene called HbA, HbA gene. This is the gene which is responsible for the production of the hemoglobin, right. See here. HBA, HBA, this is the gene responsible for the production of the hemoglobin. Not only hemoglobin, this gene controls two functions. One is the structure of the RBC. So, in order for the RBC to be in a, a discoidal shape, that is also the function of this gene. And also, it produces the hemoglobin. Understand? Two functions. So, this hemoglobin, HBA, HBA gene is located on chromosome number 11. This is important. This is again an 
autosome right so chromosome number 11 so in the chromosome number 11 this hba hba gene is present so when they are normal the person will have the normal healthy rbc and normal healthy hemoglobin for some people what will happen they will be a mutation what type of mutation single point mutation this is important okay single point mutation will occur in the hba gene so this hba gene hba gene is responsible for the production of beta globally we know that hemoglobin contain alpha and beta chain right so hba gene is responsible for beta chain production so that means there is another gene which controls alpha chain understood so it controls beta chain production got it now for some people what will happen there will be a point mutation single point mutation in this gene so as a result this hba will become hb yes okay yes yes stands for sickle cell it stands for sickle cell so the person who has hbs gene will not produce normal shaped rbcs and their beta globulin will not be normal in structure they will be mutant hemoglobin okay so they will have mutant hemoglobin so as a result this person will develop sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia disease understood okay right now let us understand what this mutation uh, does how the change in the hemoglobin structure occurs okay see we know that triplet codons are there so triplet codons codes for one amino acid right so in the production of the hemoglobin chain the codon gag it codes for glutamic acid okay so in this patient what will happen instead of this rd9 it is replaced by uracil this is a point mutation single point mutation so what will happen instead of rd9 uracil is present in that coda so now the triplet code will be gug instead of gag so gag codes for glutamic acid whereas now this mutated version gug codes for valine so valine we know that the amino acids the polypeptide chain Okay, when amino acids are joined like this, instead of glutamic acid, now here what comes? Valine is there. Okay, this is a defect. Defect. Defect in the beta globulin chain. So, the hemoglobin now is a mutant hemoglobin which will not perform its function. So, as a result, the patient RBCs will be sickle in shape. Understand? Right. So, why we call the sickle cell anemia as a pleiotrophic disease? That is important, right? So, we know that the gene HBA codes for two things. One is the shape of the RBC and also the hemoglobin, beta globin. These two things. Okay. So, if there is any defect in this gene, when it becomes HBS instead of A, so these two things get disturbed. The shape of the RBC get disturbed. So, normal RBC will be like this. Now, it becomes crescent shape. Similarly, the hemoglobin which is present on the surface of the RBC, now it becomes defect. So, it could not able to carry oxygen, enough oxygen. Understand? So, as a result, what will happen? The patient will have several effects. Okay. The first thing is, if the RBC is healthy, the healthy discoidal shape means it could able to flow freely through the blood vessels. See here, the healthy RBCs could able to flow smoothly through the blood vessels. Now, this is a defective crescent shaped RBC. So, what will happen here? Here, the RBC, sickle cell RBCs, they clump together and form a blood clot. So, as a result, blood flow will be blocked. Okay. So, in sickle cell anemia patient, in their blood vessels, there won't be smooth blood flow because the RBC shapes are sickle shaped, so they get clogged. So, when the blood flow is not there, it will damage all the important vital organs. So, blood will not go to heart, liver, kidney, lungs. So, these organs will not get sufficient oxygen. So, this is a very, very serious condition. Okay. So, as a result, what will happen? The patient will have pain in, in their body. The organs get damaged. All the organs will get damaged. They will have stroke, high blood pressure, loss of vision. It could lead to blindness, liver failure, heart attack like this. So, the patient will die. A sickle cell anemia patient 
will die. It is a very fatal disease. Understand? So now why we are calling the sickle cell anemia under pleiotrophic uh, disease means see different conditions in the body is controlled by only one gene. So if there is a single point mutation occurs in the beta globulin gene, this mutation results in the defect in different organs, different functions of the body. Understand? So that's why one gene controls different characters in an organism. That's why this is an example for pleiotrophism. Got it? Now, now we know that this is an autosomal recessive disease, right? So let us understand how the sickle cell anemia transfer from the parent to the offspring, right? So suppose, look at this picture. Suppose if a parent is there, both the parents are carriers. What do you mean by carriers? Carriers means they will have two set of genes. So one gene will be a defective gene, that is mutant gene. Another gene will be a healthy gene. Okay. So look here. Look here. We know that HBA, HBA is the normal healthy gene. Right. Whereas in this carrier parents, one gene is a normal gene. Another gene is a defective gene. We could see here. Yes. Okay. So this is called unaffected carrier. They will not get affected, whereas they will contain the defective gene. Okay. So, if a father is also a carrier for sickle cell anemia, if the mother is also a carrier for sickle cell anemia, so what will happen for their offsprings, for their uh, next generation? Okay. So, what will happen? So, we can simply predict this by putting a Punnett square. Okay. So, see, this will be the gamete. So, this will be the father gamete and this will be the mother gamete. Right. So, the father contains HBA, a normal gene and also a mutant version, okay. And the mother has HBA and also a mutant version. So, just unite this. So, HBA, HBA from the father and the mother, if they join, what will be the offspring? The offspring will have HBA, HBA which is a normal, okay. So, this baby will be normal healthy baby. Whereas, if this HBA joins with this HBA as a defective gene, what will be the a dominant gene is there and a defective gene is there. So, dominant will be expressed. So, the person will be a carrier. Understood? And third one. If the HPS, a defective gene is there and if it, if this joins with a dominant gene, again, the person will be a carrier. And the fourth option, if a defective gene from the mother combines with a defective gene from the father, so both the genes will be defective. So, this baby will be having sickle cell anemia. That is, the diseased condition, okay, the recessive disease, okay. So, see here, so these are the two uh, set of chromosomes in the parent, in the father. So, one is a normal, which contain normal gene, another has a defective gene. Similarly, this is a normal gene, this is a defective gene in the mother, okay. So, what are the different chances in which they will unite, okay. So, from the father, one normal and from the mother, one normal. So, this baby will be unaffected, a healthy individual. So, 1 in 4 will be healthy baby. And second one. So, a normal chromosome gene from one father and a defective gene from mother. Okay. So, this baby will be a carrier because one defective gene is there. And the third option. A defective gene from the father and a normal gene from the mother. So, again here one defective gene is there, one normal gene is there. So, these two children will be carriers. Got it? And fourth option, a defective gene from the father and a defective gene from the mother. So, since both are defective, recessive condition, this will be expressed and this baby will be affected. It will have sickle cell anemia. Okay? So, this is the thing. So, when both the genes, HBA, HBA are expressed, that means when both are homozygous dominant condition, okay, this will be a normal gene. So, the person will have normal RBC and normal hemoglobin like this, like this, okay. So, this is a heterozygous condition, heterozygous condition, right. So, one dominant, one defective. So, the person will be a carrier. So, 50 percentage of his RBCs will be normal and hemoglobin will be normal, whereas 50 percentage will have sickle cell shape, a defective hemoglobin carrier. So, like this, the Parent will have two carrier babies, okay. And third option, HPS, HPS. That means this is also a homozygous recessive condition. So, where the child will be deceased sickle cell anemia patient, 100% all the RBCs produced in the child will be 
of sickle cell and defective hemoglobin so this will lead to death fatal condition okay so these are the different options in which an unaffected carrier father and an unaffected carrier mother when they unite the offsprings will be okay so this we say like this will result in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 1 is to 2 is to 1 the kids so one will be a normal child one will be a diseased child and two will be carrier child okay so this sickle cell anemia is an example for pleiotropic gene so here how can we detect the carrier stage that is through a normal microscopic examination so when we take a drop of blood of the uh, patient suspected and do a smear and observe the shape of the rbcs if the rbcs are like this this shape okay so then we could conclude that they are the carriers so this is one way we could detect the carrier parents right and another important thing is the patients with sickle cell anemia they are resistant to malaria this is an important point you should remember they are resistant to malarial disease we know that malaria is caused by a parasite plasmodium so this parasite go and multiplies inside the rbcs so only when the rbc is a normal discoid in shape then only the parasite could go and continue its life cycle if the rbc is sickle shape like this okay then the malarial parasite could not able to invade the rbc and continue its life cycle so as a result sickle cell anemia patient will be resistant to malaria when compared to normal people now let us move on to the second example for pleiotrophy in human being is Phenyl ketone urea. Phenyl ketone urea is an another important example. So, what is phenyl ketone urea? In short form, we call this as PKU. Phenyl ketone urea. What is this? This is a rare, rare inborn error of metabolism. Inborn error means from the parents, this is uh, inherited to the children. So, by birth itself, the kids will have this problem. Okay. So. This is again an example for autosomal recessive disorder due to defect in a gene in the present in the chromosome number 21. So, this is again important. See, previously we have seen sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia occurs due to defect in the gene in the chromosome number 11. Right. So, this phenyl ketonuria occurs due to defect in the gene in the chromosome number 21. Okay. Right. So, what is phenyl ketonuria? So, just look at this thing first. Phenyl alanine. What is phenyl alanine? Phenyl alanine is an amino acid. We know, right? So, this amino acid we get through our diet. So, whenever we eat through our food, we get this phenyl alanine amino acid. So, this phenyl alanine is converted into an another amino acid called tyrosine in liver. Okay? Liver produces an enzyme called phenyl alanine hydroxylase ASC stands for hydroxylase ASC stands for enzyme anything which ends with ASC is called as enzyme right so in the liver we have an enzyme phenyl alanine hydroxylase in short form PAH phenyl alanine hydroxylase this enzyme converts the phenyl alanine which we get through the diet into an another amino acid tyrosine right this tyrosine is essential for neurotransmitter production so this is responsible for many many functions and one of the important functions of tyrosine is for the producing the neurotransmitter signals for the brain okay essential for the neurotransmitter production so this is the thing normally happens in a healthy person some people what happened in some people then occur a single point mutation see single point mutation occurs in the gene which gene the gene which encodes this phenyl alanine hydroxylase enzyme okay the gene is called as pah gene we know that the enzyme short form is pah so the name of the gene is also name of the enzyme pah gene okay so as a result as a result the enzyme will not be produced in this per patient okay so look here for some people when they take phenyl alanine through that diet when it goes to the liver the liver will not produce the enzyme phenyl alanine hydroxylase why because of mutation mutation okay so when there is no enzyme the tyrosine will not be produced
So if the tyrosine is not there, what will happen? This phenyl alanine gets accumulated over and over. More phenyl alanine gets accumulated in the liver. It will be converted into an abnormal breakdown product called phenyl ketone. Okay. Instead of converting into tyrosine, this is converted into an abnormal product called phenyl ketone, which is a toxic compound. This phenyl ketone gets accumulated to toxic level in the blood, in the urine, in the CSO of the patient. Okay. So, as a result, this affects the brain. Not only that, why we call this as phenylketone urea means this excess phenylketone is released in the urine of the patient. So that's why we call as phenylketone urea. It will be excess in the, it will be released in the urine. Okay, so that's why it's called as phenylketone urea. Now, so if this phenylketone urea condition occurs, the patient will have some brain uh, disorders. What will happen? The patient will have mental retardation, intellectual disability. They could not able to think or perform well compared to normal persons. Okay, behavioral problems, reduction in the hair and the skin color pigment. Why all these things occurs? Because see here, when phenylalanine is converted into tyrosine, this tyrosine is essential for the neurotransmission process in the brain. So if no tyrosine is produced because no enzyme. Okay, so as a result, the neurotransmitters will not be produced sufficiently. So, the person will not be having good intellectual capa capacity or they will be suffering from mental retardation like this brain disorders. Okay, also this tyrosine amino acid is essential for our skin pigmentation, melanin and also our hair uh, production, hair pigmentation also. Okay, so since the tyrosine is not there sufficient amount, the person will be very much uh, uh, like fair, very much fair. Okay. So, this is the disturbance in the hair and skin pigmentation. So, look at this picture. This is a patient with a condition called microcephaly. Microcephaly means compared to the body, the size of the head circumference will be very small because brain development is not there normally. Okay. So, this condition abnormal small head is called as microcephaly. So, this is the condition occur in this phenylketonuria patient. So, why we study this phenylketonuria under pleiotropic gene means, see, a single point mutation in the PAH gene, phenylalanine hydroxylase coding gene, if there is a single mutation, it affects different organs, different characters of a person. Understand? So, a defect in the single gene or a single gene controls different characters in a person. So, that's why this is an example for pleiotropic gene. Okay. So, again, this we told a recessive disorder. That means if the parents are carrier, if both the parents are carrier, carrier means the parent will have one defective gene and one normal gene. Okay. So, they will not suffer any disease, but they will carry the uh, genes in their chromosomes. Okay. So, as we saw in the sickle cell anemia, when the parents are carrier, what will be the offsprings again in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. Okay. So, one offspring, one baby will be healthy. One baby will have phenylketonuria condition, recessive. So, it will be expressed. Okay. And two babies will have carrier stitch. Okay. Understand? So, this is an example for pleiotrophy. So, in this lecture, we have seen what is pleiotrophic gene and two important examples for pleiotrophic gene in the human being, sickle cell anemia and phenylketonuria. So, if you like this lesson, like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel, Neat Biology Expert. Thank you.